Welcome. These are instructions for using the 5 kilonewton mechanical tester for tensile testing. Uh, when you come into the space, you will find the manual next to the computer. Here. And in there's the password you need to put in the compute. Okay, so get the password in there. The manual also has detailed instructions on how to run the instrument. And here is our department SOP with uh, help for the software. The software is here, Blue Hill 3. And we can open that up. Okay, this is our home screen for running a test and down here you can choose this icon to run a test or this one to create or edit a method. The first thing you want to do though, uh, if you're just now, if you're the first person to run the instrument, is calibrate the load cell. So that icon is up here in the upper right. It looks like a little load sale, so we're going to click on that. And the pop-up will come that uh, allows you to either balance the load sale or calibrate. In this case, we want to calibrate, so I'm going to click Calibrate. And it's warning me that I cannot have a dog bone or the, any load on the load sale during calibration, and I do not, so I'm going to click OK. And it tells me here that it's calibrating. Please wait. And when it's finished, adjusting 0 to 5,000 newtons, 4 to 20 milliamps, it tells me it's finished. And when it was calibrated. So now I'm done with the calibration. Okay. Once you have the load cell calibrated, the load should read 0. If it doesn't, you can balance the load. You only need to calibrate the load cell once at the beginning of the day. Then if you need the load at zero, you just hit balance load and it'll go to zero. After we put the dog bone in, we may need to zero the extension and that's done here on the upper toolbar, toolbar zero extension. For the most part, methods for your courses are already created and you can go directly into the test. The first screen that pops up wants you to choose your method and we're, for this training, using the polymer tensile test. And that method's going to open up. And the first thing I want to put in is the name of my sample. It has an example there, but you can name it whatever is characteristic of your sample and this is the folder it's going to put it into MSE 202 and that's a good place if you wanted to create another folder you can browse over here on the right toolbar and make your own folder in there 202 folder Okay, the next screen then that comes up is values you need to enter before your test. You may want to give it a characteristic ID such as polyester, if that's indeed what it is. And the rate at which the test is going to run is set here at 5 mils per minute. The geometry is of a rectangular dog bone and the gauge length should be measured at 16 mils. So now I need to go to the next screen. I look for the next button 
up here on the upper toolbar and then the method is asking for the length, width, and thickness of the dog bone which I'll measure and put in here. Then the next this is the screen just before the test and you have some warnings on here. Mount your sample in the grips, zero the extension, wear safety glasses, and then you're ready to start the test. So let's uh, mount the dog bone in the grips. Okay, so we're ready to mount our dog bone in the grips. The grip section is the part that's flat here. Do not grip the curved part of the dog bone. Place in between the teeth. And this tells you here which way to rotate this to tighten. The upper grip is the opposite. And I have here on a stand a laser level that will put a laser light on the dog bone so you can see if it's straight or not. You have to turn it on at the top and then unlock it and you can see the in this example the laser is showing the dog bone is still crooked. So we have to adjust its position Okay, so I'm just going to put the laser on the edge of the polymer there and tighten these down to hold that in place. If the length isn't quite right, I'm going to jog using this jog button up or down, depending on what I need. Okay, the laser is pretty straight, so I have to hit this knob button about three times to turn it off. Now I'm going to snug up this grip and I'm ready to go do the test. Okay, in order to show you a test, I've got both the dog bone and the computer screen in the image. I have mounted the specimen. I need to zero the extension up there. There is a load on the load cell from gripping the dog bone into the grips, but that load you want to leave on the dog bone because it's actually there. Then make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and press the start button, which is here. And when you hover over it, if it's ready, it'll highlight yellow. So I'm going to hit that. And the test begins. You can see plotted here force as a function of displacement as the grips move apart. And quickly we got to a maximum force on this polymer. And now the polymer is elongating, and that's why the force is not going up. As the extension proceeds, the polymer is elongated. If you look closely at the dog bone, you can probably see that elongation. Okay, that was the sound of the polymer breaking. If I zoom in on the screen, you can see a pop-up here that tells me to remove the specimen 
and then click OK. So we're going to do that. We remove the specimen first in case when we hit OK, the grips are going to move back together to the zero position. And if our specimen is a metal, it would crash the damage the load cell. So it's a good habit to take the specimen out at this time. This tells you which way to turn to remove the specimen. Okay, and now I'm going to hit OK on the software and you'll see the grips go back to zero. In order to complete the test back here at the software, we are going to hit next. And when we do that, it wants you to export the raw data. But, and then click this button, finish sample, to finish the sample and save the file. So the file isn't saved till you hit this button. Finish. And then a pop-up comes and asks me if I want to test another sample. If I'm done for the day, I can say no. But if I do want to test a second, I hit yes, and it starts all over for the second sample. Let's go to the folder and find our data. Here's a 202 folder, and we put it in our group MA, sample 1. So you can see there's a lot of data here. A lot of files here and the raw data you really want to take is in this folder. This is an Excel file in here and if I open it up you see force and displacement and you can plot this data and do any calculations you need from the raw data. In addition to that there is a PDF here, which is essentially an image that we saw on the screen and the parameters for the test. So that's the data and it's always good to check the first run or test to make sure you are saving the data and you can find where it is. Alright.